Good evening, everyone. I am Mary Hartley, the Greater London Returning Officer. Welcome to the declaration of the results, the election of the Mayor of London. And I apologise for keeping you waiting. I do not have the candidates behind me on the stage, as is normal, but I am going to ask them to join us in the chamber now. I'm going to read the names and the order of the ballot paper as the candidates join us here. Sean Bailey, Kam Balayev, Sean Berry, Count Binface, Valerie Brown, Piers Corbyn, Max Fosch, Lawrence Fox, Peter Gammons, Richard Hewison, Vanessa Hudson, Steve Kelleher, Sadiq Aman Khan, David Curtin, Farrah London, Nimza Bungay, Nico Omilana, Nico Omilama, Louisa Porritt, Mandu Kate Reed, Brian Benedict Rose. So, I am now able to declare the results of the election of the Mayor of London for the term 21 to 20. 2021 to 2024. I'm going to read the names of the candidates in the order they appeared on the ballot paper and announce the number of first preference votes they each received. Sean Bailey, Conservative Party candidate, 893,051. Kam Balayev, Renew, 7,774. Sean Berry, Green Party, 197,976. <laughs> Count Binface, Count Binface for Mayor of London, 24,775. <laughs> Valerie Brown, the Burning Pink Party, 5,305. Piers Corbyn, Let London Live, 20,604. Max Fosch, Independent, 6,309. Lawrence Fox, The Reclaim Party, 47,634. Peter John Gammons, UKIP, 14,393. Richard John Howard Hewison, Rejoin EU, 28,012. <laughs> Vanessa Helen Hudson, Animal Welfare Party, People, Animals, Environment, 16,826. Steve Kelleher, Social Democratic Party, 8,764. <laughs> Sadiq Aman Khan, Labour Party, 1 million. 13,721. David Curtin, Heritage Party, 11,025. Farrah London, Independent, 11,869. Nims Abungay, Independent, 9,682. Nico Omilana, Independent, 49,628. Louisa Manon Porritt, Liberal Democrats, 111,716. Mandu Kate Reid, Vote Women's Equality Party on Orange, 21,182. And Brian Benedict Rose, London Real Party, 31,111. No candidate received more than half of all the first preference votes cast in the election. The two candidates who received the highest number of preference votes remain in the contest. They are 
Sadiq Aman Khan and Sean Bailey. I will now announce the number of second preference votes cast for each of these two candidates. Sadiq Aman Khan received 192,313 second preference votes. Added to his total first preference votes, this gives Sadiq Aman Khan a total of 1,206,034 votes. Sean Bailey received 84,550 second preference votes. Added to his total first preference votes, this gives Sean Bailey a total of 977,601 votes. I therefore declare Sadiq Aman Khan elected as the Mayor of London. I will now ask Sadiq Aman Khan, the Mayor of London, to come to the stage to give a short speech, and I will afterwards ask Sean Bailey to speak. I want to say thank you from the bottom of my heart. I'm deeply humbled by the trust Londoners have placed in me to continue leading the greatest city on earth. I promise to strain every sinew to help build a better and brighter future for London after the dark days of the pandemic and to create a greener, fairer and safer city where all Londoners get the opportunities they need to fulfil their potential. I'm proud to have won an overwhelming mandate today. I want to thank everyone who voted for me, Labour voters and non-Labour voters. And also want to speak directly to every Londoner who didn't vote for me this week. I'll never ignore your voice, your concerns, or your worries. I'll always be a mayor for all Londoners, working to improve the lives of every single person in this city. The results of the elections around the UK show that our country, and even our city, remain deeply divided. The scars of Brexit are yet to heal, a crude culture war is pushing us further apart. There's a growing gap between our cities and towns, and economic inequality is getting worse, both within London and between different parts of our country. So as we now seek to confront the enormity of the challenge ahead, and as we endeavour to rebuild from this pandemic, we simply must use this moment of national recovery to heal those damaging divisions. I often talk about the different experiences I've lived during my life and how they've shaped my identity. I do so because these experiences have forged my cast iron belief that there's far more that unites us than divides us. I grew up on a council estate a working class boy, a child of immigrants. But I'm now the mayor of London. I'm a Londoner through and through. This city is in my blood. But I'm also a patriotic Englishman and a Brit who's proud to represent this nation's great capital. The experiences I've had through my life have shaped my belief that we all have a responsibility to do everything we can to build the bridges that bring us together rather than the walls that can only drive us further apart. This virus doesn't care whether you live in London or Liverpool, whether you're a Brexiteer or a Remainer, or what you, what you think it means 
to be woke. We're only defeating it by acting together and by helping each other. So now we must capture and harness that spirit of unity and cooperation to build a better and brighter future. And it's in this spirit I promise to lead London over the next three years, building bridges between the different communities in our city, building bridges across cultural, social and class divides, building bridges between London and the rest of the country to ensure London can play its part in a national recovery and building bridges between City Hall and the government because we must all work together to build a brighter, greener and more equal future for London and for our entire country after the pandemic. It's not a competition between areas. People without a good job or living in poverty need help wherever they are. I want to finish by saying thank you. Thank you to my wife Sadia and my family for your endless support. It's been a tough five years and I know how lucky I am to have you. Thank you to the returning officer, Mary Harpley, at your team and those across London for delivering this election under incredibly difficult circumstances. Thank you to the other candidates in these elections who put forward a positive vision for our city. And congratulations to those who've been elected to the London Assembly. Thank you to my supporters for all your hard work phoning Londoners, delivering leaflets and knocking on doors. You have been brilliant. And most importantly, thank you to my fellow Londoners for the trust you've placed in me once again today. It's a privilege to serve. Thank you. Thank you. Sean Bailey, would you like to come to the stage? This last year, as London has dealt with the pandemic, indeed the whole world has dealt with it, it made for a very unusual election. Everyone here faced tough decisions, tough times, and of course Londoners in particular had a very, very tough time. So I'd like to say congratulations to all the candidates for the campaigns that you ran. But as I went through these, for me, what was two years of campaigning, one feeling felt familiar to me, one challenge had always felt the same. And that's the feeling of being written off by pollsters, by journalists, by fellow politicians. But it's no surprise to me that Londoners didn't write me off. When you come from where I've come from and seen the things I've seen as a poor boy who's been homeless, who's been unemployed, who's been a youth worker in the city, you understand that London is a generous of spirit and will give you a hearing. I am proud that my campaign was able to shine a light on the things that many Londoners feel that they are, unheard of, are being unheard on. I was glad to shine a light on safety, the fact that many Londoners can't afford a home and are being priced out of London by a relentless renewal of tax. So I want to start by thanking everybody who supported me, those who voted Conservative for their first time, but most importantly, those who gave a chance to a young black boy from Labrick Grove in West London. I want to thank my hugely talented team who spent a long time reading very awful things about them, but they proved that their good team outperformed such a young, vibrant, exciting team. But I also want to thank my mum. All of this is only possible because of my mum and my wonderful wife, Ellie, and my two children, who believed in me when sometimes I didn't believe in me. 
but they pushed. And I want to thank London. London has given me an opportunity, and I know that all the candidates here want to work to give Londoners opportunities as well. So I thank all the candidates, including Sadiq Khan, our mayor. Well done, Sadiq, generally, I believe I'm genuinely that. But I'd say this, I hope you take this opportunity to focus on the fact that people who look like me are four times as likely to be murdered than people who look like you. London is the greatest city in the world. It's why we're all stood here. But that greatness shouldn't be taken for granted. It can be enhanced or destroyed by our elected officials. I believe Mayor Khan stood for this position because he knows it's a powerful position, an opportunity to deliver for Londoners. So I hope it reflects on that opportunity, that responsibility, and doesn't blame everything on the government, but makes a change from the position, the very privileged position he's been given by Londoners. But I want to end by saying this. London is the greatest city in the world. We can and must work together to heal all our social divisions and bring London together. I look forward to my three years as a London Assembly member. Mind you, I haven't checked the numbers. Let's hope that's correct. But I look forward to that, to make sure that I can play my small part in holding our mayor to account and delivering for Londoners. I want to thank everybody who made my opportunity to stand for Mayor of London in this great city, in this real time of need. I want to thank you all for giving me that chance. It's been a long road, but I've enjoyed every minute of it. London is great, we are great, and we will prosper here in London. Thank you. Thank you very much.